Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this artificial intelligence tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about Q learning, and specifically, we're going to have an introduction to a project that we're going to do in Q learning with reinforcement learning. In the previous videos, we've been over like a simple, a simple Q learning implementation, and we've also talked about like uh, the theory and all the kind of methods behind Q learning and like what uh, what it is and like how we can use Q learning. So in this video here, we're going to have an introduction to uh, a bigger prop project that we can do in Q learning, where we can have an agent that is operating with it, like a bigger and more complex environment. And then by and by up, uh, by in interacting with that environment, it is learning by going through episodes, and then from each episode, it learns something and updates its Q table when we're doing Q learning in reinforcement learning. So first of all, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video, and also like this video if you like the content and it really help me out in a, in, a, in a huge way, both the channel and me personal. So I really appreciate your report. So let's jump into the video here and let's talk about the introduction to the project that we're going to do here in, uh, in artificial intelligence tutorial um, with reinforcement learning and Q learning. So first of all, we're going to have this short recap over what Q learning is and like how we can use Q learning in reinforcement learning. So when we're talking about Q learning, it is when we are learning the optimal policy uh, or the quality of taking some action from a given state that we're in over time. So this is what, what we all talked about in some of the previous videos and we have been more in depth with some of these uh, topics that we're going over in this video here. But it's just to recap it before we're jumping in and actually like implementing it into our project um, in reinforcement learning. So Q learning also requires that our processes, um, that is a finite markup decision process, and that means that our our like states need to have markup processes, and at that at that that says that a state um, at like at an action only depends on a given state that we're in now, and doesn't um, doesn't depend on any of the previous states. So only the present state that we're in now. So we need to like implement some of the information from the previous states into into the given state that we're in now to have this uh, markup uh, markup property. So that is also required when we're talking about Q learning in reinforcement learning. So the agent in Q learning learns the optimal policy by by trying to like maximize the expected Q value of a total reward for all the states that it has visited, um, and then starting from the current state. So it's all always trying to maximize the expected Q value, and it's trying to like find um, the optimal policy. And then when it has found the optimal policy, it can just follow that for every state that is in then for a given state it will just take the, the value or like the action that that returns the maximum um, maximum q value or the or the maximum uh, expected reward or a return and then we're then following the optimal policy with our agent in that way in q learning so in q learning when we're when we're learning in episodes with our agent we then update our q table with the q function that we're also talked about and then we take the action with the highest value um, when we're training our agent and also when we're deploying our agent so down here is, is an example of how a Q table looks like and we're going to implement this Q table here in um, in C++ and in the project that we're going to do in, in the next couple of videos. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, splitting this video or like this project into like uh, two or three videos where first of all here we're going to have an introduction to the project and talk about what the project is and what we're going to implement. And then we're going to have videos where we're actually going to implement and talk about uh, the code and how to implement Q learning and, and reinforcement learning in code, but also like how to train our, our agent, deploy our agent, and do some tests and, and tuning of the parameters in, in the Q learning function. So this Q table down here, we have a state and an action. So we have this state action pair, and then we have that in our Q table here, and then we have a value for that uh, state action pair. And the value here would be like the Q value that we're learning, uh, that, that we're learning uh, during training, and then we're updating uh, our Q table with uh, during training. So first of all, here we have a state in action and we give it that to the Q table. And then what we get out from the Q table here is the Q value. And we'll now and, and when we take in an action, when we have uh, trained our agent, we will take the action with the highest Q value in our Q table uh, for a given state that we're in. And then that Q value corresponds to an action that we're going to take in the environment uh, from a given state. So the Q learning algorithm here and the basic of the Q algorithm here is that after the time step, the agent will choose an action to go to the next state. So like when we're in a new state, it, it, the, action, like the agent will choose an action uh, where to go next. And the weight for that action, it depends on the gamma factor that we're, that we're defining in our, in our Q function, as we can see down here. So we are valuing the rewards received earlier higher than those received later on. Like for example, if we take the example down here with the, this is the, the, this is the equation or like the Q function that we're going to update our Q table with in this project. So first of all, here we have the, the new 
uh, Q value here that we're going to update our Q table with. And we have that is equal to the old Q value here plus um, the alpha here, which is a learning rate, which we're going to talk about a lot more in the project here as well. So the learning rate just specifies like how fast we want to learn uh, for to us to learn the new stuff that, that, that we learn from taking a new action um, in a given state. And then we have like in, inside these uh, parentheses here, where, which where we have simple difference learning. So first of all, here we have the reward for the given time step that we're in now. So we take an action in a time step and then we receive a reward for that action taken. And then we have the discount factor here, uh, which is gamma, uh, which is like kind of a, a scaling factor and, and it's for valuing like the reward that, that we would have got if we in the next time step take an action. So, so this max Q here is when we're in the next state um, we take the action with the highest Q value and then we scale it by some gamma factor here. And then we're gonna have temporal different learning here. Um, we subtract, subtract the old value or the old Q value here from the new, uh, from the new uh, max value here that we could take uh, in the next time step. So this is the new value here that we're going to uh, scale with some alpha factor um, and it depends on how fast we want to learn. So like we're going to do a lot of tests to, turn, to, to like try to find the optimal uh, parameters or like the optimal values for all of these um, all of these parameters inside of this function here and we're going to do some tests so we can visualize it and like how to how to find the different kind of parameters and also like encode how to set up a test and how to find them so this is how we update our Q table down here with this Q function so the Q function here it just calculates the quality of a state action pair so for each state action pair we calculate the quality of that state action pair and then we update our Q table with that so first of all here in the algorithm, then we initialize the Q table with zeros and then it will be updated during training and then we update all all like indexes or all of all places in our Q table uh, when we're training with this Q function. And then we take an action from the current state that we're in. We get a reward for this, for, from the state and the action that we took. And then we enter a new state, which is the action that we took. And then we update the Q table with what we have learned for taking this action uh, from, from the given state and also the reward we got for, for taking that action. So to, to get more into the project here, we have a, a, a quick overview here what the project contains. So first of all, we have an environment with multiple rooms that our agent is going to interact with and move around in and then find some different kind of uh, information. And then a certain reward is predefined for each room. So we have a multiple different kind of rooms spread out and then we have reward uh, like a random or like some predefined random reward in each room that our agent needs to like find out which room has the highest reward and then try to like find a path between uh, rooms and then for a given number of times that we need to maximize its reward. So like, let's say it has 16 rooms then and it gets five times steps, then it needs to like find find an effective navigation strategy to get from one room uh, and then uh, taking five steps and then maximizes um, its return. So we use QLearning here to learn effective nav navigation strategies in, in this project here. And the goal is to maximize the agent's reward within a fixed number of time steps as I just talked about and the example there I just gave you. So the procedure here for this project is that first of all, we're going to define the states and uh, the states for our QLearning and the states that we're going to have in our Q table. And we need to make sure that the task has marker property because if it, it doesn't have marker property and it depends on the previous states that the agent has been in, then we can't use crew learning uh, to like try to find the optimal policy for our agent. So in this case here for this project, we need to make sure that our task has marker property and we'll do that by keeping track of which rooms uh, the agent has ha have, have visited and also by keeping track of how many times uh, the room has been visited by the agent because these are these are uh, uh, really good and we need to like the agent needs to know like which rooms has been visited and and how many times because we don't want to re-enter the room um, more than once because then the reward will already be taken and we will get zero reward for taking that action into a room um, so we need this property here to make sure that it only depends on the given state that we're in now and none and not on the on the previous states that it has already been in. So we need to build this memory into our state now and give it marker property. And then second here, we're going to set up the Q table and reward matrix. So the so the reward matrix is like what we define with our like points or like our distribution of reward. And then the Q table is the Q table that we're going to update. And then the Q table is actually like trying to estimate uh, the reward matrix. So the agent doesn't know anything about the reward matrix. It only know, knows its Q table. And then it tries by going over episodes and trying to interact with the environment. Then it tries to estimate uh, the, like the, the optimal 
um, Q table, which is uh, kind of like the reward matrix. So this, this is the end goal for the agent it is to it is try to estimate uh, the reward matrix with the Q table. And then we're going to implement an epsilon greedy uh, algorithm because first of all, we need to explore a lot in the environment. And then later on, uh, we want to explore, explore less and less and exploit more what we already have learned. So we're going to talk about that when we're going to implement any code as well, because it's a really, it's really important factor here by using Q learning and also just in reinforcement learning um, in general, when we have an agent that is, that is going to learn, then in the first of all, if we just exploit what we already know, but in the start, we don't know anything about our environment because we haven't explored anything that would make any sense. So we need to, to implement this epsilon greedy algorithm approach here. And then we need to make the functions to take the different kind of actions and also run the episode so our agent can train and also to deploy our agent in the end when we have trained it. And then we update the queue table on the, on the way and when we're running through episodes and taking actions. And then fifth, the fifth, um, fifth point here in the procedure is to train the agent and also like show the results and the test and also how we can tune some of the parameters to get uh, better test results and also like to, to make our agent better and like train faster and more and more stable and then in the end deploy our agent and see which route it takes uh, to op uh, to maximize its rewards when it's only given an, a number of time steps and it will be initialized in some random room and then needs to maximize the reward by taking for example five or six um, five or six actions from the given state so this is just um, the, 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 the Q function that we're going to use to update our Q table with in this project. So just to give you an overview here is the flowchart of Q learning, like how we can how we're going to implement it. I, we're going to take one one box or like one square here um, at a time, and then we're going to implement it in this way here. So first of all, we have um, we're going to implement a function that initializes the Q table, and then we need a function that can choose an action from the given state, and then we have a function here that takes an action and then update the Q uh, takes takes an action and we return a new state. And then we get a reward for taking that action. And when, then when we get our reward and we've taken an action, then we update our queue table um, with the function that I just showed you. And then we just keep on doing the same procedure here for each episode. So we can say that like one, one, like one flow here in the flowchart here is just like um, taking one action from one given state and then we update our queue table. And then we will do this multiple times here in an episode. And also when we're training, when we're doing multiple episodes in our training process. So here's the environment that we're going to have in this project here where we have these different kind of rooms. So in this case here we have 11 rooms and we start from, from room zero here. And then we can see we have this predefined reward here in each room. So for example, here in room zero, we have a predefined reward of 25. And then in room one here, a predefined reward of five and in room five here, 10 and stuff like that. And then we're going to implement this here in our in our reward matrix and then we have our agent is, is going to de de be deployed in one of those rooms here and then it's going to take a number of time steps and try to maximize a reward so let's say it's for example starts from room zero here then it can only go to room one here so we need to implement that as well in um, in our uh, reward matrix and also like when we and when we implement our queue learning um, approach because like it can, for example, go from room zero to two, it has to go through room run. So we need to implement this as well. But in case we want to take like, for, for example, five, five time steps or like five actions from uh, from zero here, we will then optimal, like when, when our agent has trained, the optimal way here would go from uh, this initial start position here, which is zero, room zero, and then it will go to room one, room five, and then nine, and then 10, and then it will be the maximum, uh, maximum reward that it can get by only taking five time steps um, in this environment here and it's going to learn that by just training training the agent and interacting with the environment and playing around with some of the parameters to get the most optimal uh, result and then in the end we're going to um, visualize and like visualize the, the test results and then we can see like how the different kind of parameters affects the result so i'm really excited for that and we're going to implement all of this in code here and i'm going to show you like how to do it but first of all we need to we need to get an overview of already what it is because then it's easier to go in and implement it when we have a, an overview and we know like point from point like what we need to do and what what is the procedure when we're going to implement it because else we we it, it will, we will just mess it up and we probably like one one um, thing about giving our states market property or something else will miss and we'll just end up um, in a mess so we need to set up this environment for you first and like make sure we know what different kind of functions we need to implement and and how we're going to implement it and also talk and think, think about different kind of states 
and, and also like the rewards and how we're going to tackle this pro pro problem. So this is the environment that we're going to implement and and like these are the rooms that the agents can go through and we can see like the doorways here that that like connects the different kind of rooms and and the, and the agents can't go from from any rooms unless there is like a connection between them. So these are some of the results here that we're going to get from implementing this project here um, in uh, in code. And I just want to give you this teaser here so you can see like what we're going to achieve um, when we have implemented this and when we have trained our agent over a number of episodes. So in this case, here we're training our uh, our agent over thirty thousand episodes, and we're going to play around with some of the parameters and change the parameters and see how it affects the agent when he's training. And then we're going to talk about how some of the factor like how how some of the factors and also some of the parameters. Uh, depend on each other and how they affect each other and how it also reflect, um, affects the result and then we're going to talk about like how we find the most optimal parameters to make our agent learn as fast and best as, as, as possible so in this case here we're, we're training over 30,000 episodes and we want to to maximize our expected reward so we can see that we can play with some of the parameters these parameters here and get a, a higher number of expected reward um, over a number of episodes and then we're going to do this again with the learning rate, like how fast we want our agent to learn. And we can see that we get some strange results down here. And we're going to talk about like why we get these uh, strange results with this parameter here and how these parameters uh, affect each other. And the last one here is the epsilon decay rate, where uh, which affects our, our epsilon greedy algorithm. So this is like how, how much we want to explore in, in the start and then over time, like how much we want to explore over time. So in this case here, we're going to explore less and less uh, and less and then exploiting more, like the more episodes we get into the training, then we want to exploit the more of what we have learned and then don't explore that much as, as we did in the beginning uh, to have this like nice and steady uh, learning rate or like nice and steady learning result. And then we end up converging towards the maximum expected return um, which is in the reward matrix, and then that is the that is the that is the like the reward that the agent wants to try to estimate or like try to estimate the maximum reward that you can get by interacting and taking actions in the rooms. So if you want to see an implementation of this uh, QLearning project here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video so you will get a notification uh, when I upload the next video about. Um, one or two videos about like how we can implement this in code here and like, actually like do the training and then we're going to talk about some of the parameters and how they affect each other so i'm really excited for this project so make sure to watch all these videos here because this is like how actually like how we can use some of this q learning and like reinforcement learning that we have learned in practice so this is a really nice project uh, to get started with in reinforcement learning so Make sure to follow follow along and follow the videos and also try to implement it in code and um, by yourself. And if you're interested in what other tutorials I'm doing, I'm currently also doing a computer vision tutorial in OpenCV um, and C++ and also an algorithm and data structure tutorial in, um, in C++ as well. So if you're interested in one of those tutorials as well, uh, I'll link to one of them up here and you can go check that out. Or else I'll just see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.